I'm trying to give you the understanding between mercy, grace, and protection. Mercy, grace, and protection. As far as a Christian is living a holy life, a righteous life, and being prayerful, they have grace, mercy, protection intact. It makes it next to impossible to get such a Christian to destroy. In fact, before you can, you are, you are an agent to destroy such a Christian, you must first ask for permission from God that I want to attack this person. And if God gives you permission before you can touch them, about other than that, you cannot, you cannot penetrate their defense system. And a typical example is Job. The man was righteous and prayerful, and therefore he had grace, mercy, and protection. So when the devil wanted to attack Job, he could not because the, the, the Bible says God had formed a hedge. The devil himself went to tell God that you have formed a head of protection around everything that he has. So we cannot touch him. I cannot touch him. Why? Because protection was intact. Mercy and grace was intact. So the devil wanted to touch Job, to attack Job, to destroy Job. He had to now ask for permission from God that give me the opportunity and then I'll breach the defense system. So anytime anybody is righteous, holy, and prayerful, sometimes God himself wants to test them, test them and take them to the next level so he can allow some challenges like he did for Job. And say, Satan, you know what? I allow you to pass my daughter or son through this test. And I know he is going to pass. And then I can promote him to the next level of supernatural blessing and prosperity and increase and favor that I have for him or her. So God can allow you to go through certain situations and the devil will be fighting you and God has permitted because he knows that you are going to pass it and he knows that he's watching. He's, God, in fact, is supervising the attack. Anytime you are going through any attack, there are about three or four things you have to ask yourself. This attack, is it from the devil? Am I being attacked because I've sinned against God? If you sin, the devil will strike. Am I being attacked? Because it is a satanic attack on me. I haven't done anything, but my enemies are just coming after me. Or am I being attacked because I'm going through a test or a trial of my feet, which will end with exhortation? lifting, promotion. That's the things you have to ask yourself. Whenever things are not going right with me, I have to ask three questions. Is this problem I'm going through, is it because of my personal sin that has allowed the devil to breach my defense system? Or if I have not sinned. So if you have sinned, the first thing you don't say, I bind you in Jesus' name, die by fire. You are wasting your time. Immediately you are being attacked because of your sin. What you need to do is to ask for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I've sinned against you and it has allowed my enemies to invade my territory. It has allowed my enemies to come after me. It is the sin that I've committed against you that has allowed all this confusion in my marriage. Don't come and say, I bind you. I cast you out. Die by fire. Who is going to die by fire? You have invited the devil in. You can't go and cheat on your wife and cheat on your husband and live anyhow and now the devil is coming to your mind to break the marriage and you are not saying any witch die by fire. The, the witch is not going to die by fire. The demons are not going to die by fire. The sin of the couples is what has brought in the, dis, the destroyer to destroy the marriage. You better ask for mercy and forgiveness. You go and commit fornication and now they are striking you with sexual transmitted disease or uh, HIV and you're saying die by fire. It, will not, it is the sin that you committed is what has allowed the devil to come after your life. 
and your family and your children. So when you discover that, hey, it is a sin, yeah, it's a sin. The Holy Spirit is prompting you. And when it's a sin, you'll be convicted. You'll be convicted. You know that there's something I've done wrong. You don't pray die by fire. You say, Lord, forgive me. You repent and read Psalms 51. Create in me, O God, a clean heart and you and a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, but restore to me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and renew thy right spirit within me. When David sinned against God, the devil came to attack, to punish him because of his sins. What did he do? He repented and God showed him mercy. So the first thing is to make sure that you are clean. And if you are at fault, don't pray die by fire. Don't bind and loose. You are wasting your time. Take a time of consecration. Set yourself apart and ask for mercy. Father, I'm sorry. Lord, I repent. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I repent. Lord, forgive me. I'll wash me with the blood. Cleanse me with the blood. I'm sorry. You humble yourself in fasting and prayer, asking not for binding and loosing, but for the mercies and forgiveness of God. And telling the Lord that your word says that you said that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm coming before you, Father. Forgive me. Sometimes, the sin of your husband can bring the attack. The sin of your son can bring the attack. So when you discover that a sin has brought in, has breached the gap and brought in invaders into your family, you begin to pray for forgiveness for that family member. Because they brought the sin in. You are living with your spouse or your son or, and the person is watching pornography, masturbating, womanizing. Definitely the demons will come. The witches will come and visit. Because now the, your house has become a platform of what demonic activities. You pray for mercy. You pray for mercy and forgiveness. You pray for mercy and forgiveness. Because even if you buy the demons, they are not going anywhere. Because they have legal right to be there. Because somebody has invited them. The things you've been watching in your house has invited them. The thing your son is watching or whoever is staying in your house is watching has invited them. The pornography has invited them. You can bind all you can. After binding, they will, they, will, they will molest you more in your dreams. They will, they will attack you more. You ask for fair, mercy and forgiveness. When you check and it's not a sin issue, then you are going through a, a problem and it's not because of a sin. Then it means the second level is sometimes whether the devil is attacking you. For the sake of attack. When you realize that this problem I'm going through, it's a spiritual warfare. The enemy is after me. The enemy is after my marriage. The enemy is after my health. The enemy is after my finances. The enemy is after my glory, my destiny. When it's the enemy, when you when you know you have not sinned, and you know that it's a demonic attack, a witchcraft attack, enemies attack, that's when you do warfare. This is when you say, Satan, I bind you, die by fire. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, fire. Any witch, any wizard, any agent who is fighting me, be consumed by fire, be destroyed by fire. That's how you do it. At that moment, you are going to a full force spiritual warfare because you know an enemy has invaded and they had no warrant or permit to come around your territory. And therefore, when you go, heaven is with you. And heaven will back you to dismantle, to destroy, and frustrate the counsel of the enemy against you. That's when you do warfare, serious warfare. Then the next level, when you are going through a problem, you ask yourself, you are going through a problem and you check and it's not because you have sinned. You are going through a problem and you have bind and you have cast out, you have loosed, you have done all the warfare and it's not going. The next, last one is trials, testing. How do you know the difference between when it's a warfare or a testing? Whenever you are going through any problem and you are at peace, you are going through hell on earth, challenges, but you are so much at peace. You are at peace because you know God is with you and God is in control. 
it means that it is a trial it's a testing that when you faithfully trust god he will bring you double for your trouble you have bind and you have loosed and it's not binding you've done everything and it's but yes you have peace in you every time you are praying you are going through things but anytime you pray you have peace in your heart it means that it is a trial it is a test that will result in upliftment promotion exaltation and the blessing of god why because before god will bless his children he must test them he doesn't promote without testing forget it this this things i'm teaching is not for people who are not christians and who they are in to grab things from god and go away and live their own life i'm talking to serious christians people redeemed by the blood of the lamb who want to go to heaven who are walking with god who are not christians and don't pray just because of what they can get from god they are all about taking advantage of God. Give me this and give me this. And they are living their own lifestyle. They are only... The, everything about them is what they can get from God. They think they are using God. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm talking about serious Christians. People who love God and are serving God. And it's not about what they can get from God. But they want to worship God with all their body, soul and spirit, mind and will it's not what god will give to them whether god gives whether he doesn't give whether it, it's good time or bad time they've decided to serve the lord all the days of their lives and in fact their greatest pleasure is to see jesus one day face to face in heaven and they are doing everything possible to live a holy life a sanctified life to behold the glory of the father i'm talking about the true christians the remnant today there are fake people who are we, we, we love talking about fake prophets, fake ministers, fake apostles, fake evangelists, fake, fake, fake false prophets, false teachers. We have also false brethren, false brethren, people who come as masses, but they, they ain't Christians. They are only in for grabs and to take and leave, take away. They are just in for what they can get and they have their own lifestyle to live. They don't think about the things of God. They are not interested. But they will come around when they are in problems because they know God is merciful. But they are not willing to serve Him. They are not willing to lay down their life for Him. They don't have a desire to know Him. They don't have a desire. They, heaven is not there. They, that, that's not what they are thinking. I'm talking about a true child of God who is preparing for the soon return of Jesus Christ. Before God will promote a true child, he will test you. You will go through testing. And that will prove your faithfulness. So when you see too many people who cannot be faithful, well, it makes you know who they are and where they are coming from. True children of God, like Job. Faithfulness. Whether God answered their prayers or did they answer their prayers, they are faithful. Whether God was good to them or God was not good to them, they are faithful to God. Because they don't serve God because of what God will do for them. They love God because they know God first loved them. And if God has not given them every, anything at all in this world, they are content in, for the fact that they've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is their Lord and personal Savior. And heaven is their eternal abode. That alone makes them wake up every day and say, Great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. I didn't, I, I'm not thanking you because you gave me a shoe today, you gave me water today, you gave me a limousine or a mansion. I'm thanking you because of the gift of eternal life, the gift that a sinner like me have been saved. That is my greatest treasure. That is my joy. I'm saved. I'm born again. My sins are forgiven. Jesus is my master and savior. I can call him our father. That is our joy. Everything else is extra bonus. That's why I like this song. It says, give me. You can take everything away, but give me you. Give me you. Give me you. Give me you, Lord. Give me you. When you are in that third phase, and which a true child of God will go through, you pray 
not binding and loosing. You don't pray for forgiveness. You pray for grace to see you through that phase of trial and testing. Lord, give me grace. You will be going through some tough times in your marriage and you're asking yourself, what did I do wrong? I've loved my husband. I'm praying. I'm doing all the right things according to the good book. So why should this happen? And you are praying and you are praying and it seems things are not changing, but you have peace in you that God is with you. Or you've lost your job. And you have prayed and prayed. You haven't received a job yet. But you, you are the little God provides here and there. You have still peace in your heart. But you are going through some tough times. But he gives you peace and tells you, my daughter, though you walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, fear no evil, for I am with you. I will see you through. But I've, I've resolved to be a virgin. I've resolved to stop fornicating, defiling myself. So why can't I get married? And why are the right men not coming around? It is a testing. If you keep on being faithful and keep on saying no to the men who only want to say they will marry you unless you have sex with them, he's testing your faith. If you stand in faith and in righteousness, he is a rewarder. He will reward you. That's when after the testing, there's promotion. God will raise a gentleman, a God-fearing man or woman to come and marry you. And those who thought you were oh, a cake, old-fashioned Christian and you are not modernizing when everybody else is sleeping along and living anyhow, why holy than thou, when they see how God exhorts you, then they will know that the God that we serve in his own time, he makes all things beautiful for those who wait patiently for him. Today, we don't have many of such Christians. We don't. Maybe less than 30%. Less than. I'm praying that you and I will be part of the 30%. But we don't have. We don't have less than 30%. The masses are 70%. I, if it's not coming, I'm, I'm I'm not going back to church. If it's not, I'm not. I I'm pray, praying, praying. I'm not going to that church anymore. Seventy percent are just remnant. Give me Jesus. Everything else can wait. Whether He answers my prayer now or not tomorrow, I'll still. Remain faithful. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Our God is able to deliver us. We know he is able to deliver us. However, even if he chooses not to deliver us, we will still not compromise. You said you were going to marry me. But if you are forcing me to sleep with you and I, I ain't doing it, and if you are going to leave, go away. Even if I have to be homeless, I will. Because I know my God is faithful. Oh, God is waiting for those Josephs again. He's waiting for the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He's waiting for the Daniels. He's waiting for those Josephs. People will stand and take a stand for purity, for righteousness. Because they fear him. They love him. Everybody is against you in your own family. Against you at your workplace. Your friends are laughing at you and saying that you, you are not modernized. Look at all of us. We are going ahead of you. And, and God says that we... Is there any remnant I can manifest my glory and let the world know that I'm a rewarder? God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Those who stand, take a stand for Him, He also takes a stand for them. Today we live our lives anyhow and we want Him to take a stand for us. We go with the flow of the masses. And when tragedy and calamity hit the masses, 
we want to come to him and say, Lord, treat me special. I'm a Christian. Treat me special. Meanwhile, your life is no special than any other person at your workplace. If Christianity was a crime at your workplace, they wouldn't find you to ac accuse you because it's not going to be known. Nobody even knows it. Everybody is one. In the family, you do what everybody do. At your workplace, you do everything. Everywhere you go, you, you blend nicely. How can God exalt us above the others? So when you are going through the trials, he gives you peace. And the prayer you pray is that God give me grace and let your grace be sufficient for me to be able to go through the fire. And that's why it says, when, when you're going through, it says, though you go through the fire, the fire will not consume you. You will pass through the water, it will not drown you. Because God is taking you through a process for the product to come out. And some of you, it is not because of your sin. So if you are not careful in classifying why you are going through what you are going through, you may deal with it wrongly. That's why Job's friend did not classify Job's problem rightly. They judged him wrongly because they were thinking Job was going through what he was going through because of the first and sin. Oh, Job, the only reason you are being attacked, you've lost your estate. You've lost your businesses. You've lost your children. You've lost your health. You are a sinner. Job, you are a sinner. That's why you are going through this. But Job says, no, I have peace in my heart. I have not sinned against God. Second phase. Then you are being attacked. So if it was a sin issue, then Job should have prayed, Lord, forgive me. But Job was innocent. The second phase. Is it the devil just attacking me to destroy me? It wasn't. Why? Because previously the devil had tried and God's protection was on him. So even if Job had said, I bind you devil, I bind you demon, I bind you principality, the devil will not be bound because the devil has gone to ask permission from God himself to test Job. So Job realized that it was because of his faith. He was being tried. He was being tested in order for him to get double for his trouble. So at that moment, Job's prayer should have been, Lord, give me grace to endure and to stand until the very end so that I can get a double for my, pro my, 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 double for my trouble. So I don't know what face you are right now. If your problems is a result of a sin, you ask God for, for forgiveness. If your problem is as a result of demonic attacks, then you do warfare. It will break and it will be destroyed. But if it's as a result of God testing you, trying you, so as to exhort you, then you pray for his grace and ask him for him to help you to be faithful and true to him. And double shall be your trouble. Double reward, double doors, double favor, double exhortation, double uplifting will be yours. So that's how you break up whatever battles you are going through. And when you diagnose it well, you'll be able to deal with any situation in your life. If it's a sin, if the problem is as a result of a sin, you repent. If it's because of demonic attacks, If it's because of demonic attacks, you do a massive warfare and you see your deliverance come through. If it's because of God testing you, then you ask him for grace and mercy. I'm praying for somebody right now who is going through some challenges, problems, trials, tribulations, and it's because of a testing and a trial. I pray that the grace of the Lord be extended to you. Extended to you. May grace be extended to you. Let the grace of God be sufficient for you. May you not quit. May you not give up. May you not break down. May you not opt out. May you not give up. 
May the grace of the Lord be sufficient for you. May you stand and win in the name of Jesus. So, listen to this. Grace, mercy, protection are going to be intact once you are prayerful, once you are living holy. The day you start compromising with your sin, with sins, protection will begin to be distanced. And that's when the devil and the demons strike people. Let me finish with my testimony. A lady, her family is filled with witches and they wanted to kill her. But she was very prayerful and she was living a holy life. So they tried and tried. They said they could not get her because she was prayerful and she was devoted to God. So this is what they planned. We will cause her husband to cheat on her. And when the husband cheat on her, they will also have an argument in the house and she will report the situation to the police. The police will come and maybe arrest the husband. And the police officer who came to the scene to help out later on had a relationship with the woman and she will fall into the trap and they will have a, an intercourse. And from that point, they will be able to finally kill her. So the prophecy came to warn her that your enemies have tried time and again and they have not been able to attack you because you are in right standing with God. You are prayerful. You are living a holy life. But they are setting a trap for you. The day you go, no matter what your husband does, never ever commit adultery. Never cheat your husband. Because the day you do it, that's the day you shall die. That's where their spells work. They wanted to kill her a long time ago. They've tried. Another young lady also. They have tried and tried and tried. They are not getting her. They brought in her fiancé who was going to lure her into sexual immorality. And the day she goes to sleep and have intercourse with a the man, then they can finally release the arrow of death against her. And it was so engineered that they knew that once she disobeys, she can say, Lord, forgive me. Mercy will be there. Grace will be there. For her to repent but protection will not be there and will strike her dead so i'm warning some of you who are going through intensive warfare and you know very well that your enemies wish you dead i'm talking to somebody if you know that the battle you are in your enemies are too wicked and wish you dead then please be very 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 careful you don't entertain sin because it will take away your protection and allow your enemies to have their way. Or oh, they'll kill you all right. You will go to heaven, but they'll kill you. And I've seen too much. I've seen it. I'm talking about things I've seen. I've seen good Christians who compromised and were stricken by their enemies. And during the short time of before they died, they made peace with God. They reconciled to God, oh Lord, forgive me for doing this. And they had mercy and compassion was there. Mercy and grace was there. They, they connected back. But the time they messed up, allowed the arrow to hit them. So whether their enemies were taking them out through cancer, taking them out through accident, whatever it is, they took them out. But they went to heaven all right because mercy and grace must be present for us, if each and every one of us to easily be able to make it right with God. But for protection, I can't guarantee you. When you fool around with sin, you make yourself vulnerable. That This is a word of advice to somebody tonight. Amen. I want us to pray one prayer point tonight. If you're located in D.C., Maryland, or Virginia and looking for a place to fellowship and find deliverance, then we invite you to join Fresh Fire Prayer Ministry. 
Fresh Fryer Prayer Ministry is not only a church, but a house of deliverance where we keep the fire of the Holy Ghost burning. Many have come to experience the power of God, setting them free from witchcraft, demonic activities, generational curses, and strongholds to break satanic limitations from their lives. Much of our focus deals with salvation, healing, deliverance, restoration of marriage, and breakthrough. The church is located at 10495 Theater Greens Boulevard in White Plains, Maryland. We meet every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and Tuesdays from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. You may also join us on our prayer line every Tuesday at 10 p.m. and Fridays at 11 p.m. by dialing 712-770-5600 and access code 950014-POUND. We look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday. For more information, visit our website at www.freshfireprayer.com. God bless you. Hi, this is Reverend Kia. Once again, welcome to Fresh Fire Prayer Ministry. I'm here to recommend to you some deliverance materials which will help you. The Bible says, buy knowledge and sell it not. Buy knowledge and sell it not. You have to, re you have to discover in order to recover. If you don't discover the mystery behind your misery, you'll not be able to recover and possess or repossess your possession. So knowledge is very vital in this day and age because what you don't know is what the enemy or your enemies will use against you. And that's why the US spend huge sums of money using it for intelligence because they'll have to know what their enemies are planning against the US before they, in order to overturn it, cancel it, frustrate it before their enemies can come against them. So the Bible says that we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. So many people are looking for deliverance, seeking for deliverance, but they are very ignorant about the ways the devil operates and they keep on falling into the devil's trap and the devil keeps on getting them. The first book I recommend to you is called Spiritual Diagnosis. Mind you, you can get all these books on our website www.freshfireprayer.com www.freshfireprayer.com You can get it on a paper book or you can get it on ebook. In the ebook, when you buy it, it will be emailed to you as an attachment and you can open it and get it. You go to the website www.freshfireprayer.com The first book is Spiritual Diagnosis. Spiritual Diagnosis is the first book I wrote after the Lord revealed to me the way the enemy operates against humanity. The way witchcraft operate, curses operate, demons operate. In this book, you will understand how the enemy operates. You are going to learn about the portals which the enemies or demons can enter into your body. You, you will know how demons also operate. You also know how to keep your deliverance, how to keep, um, stay delivered. What can keep you from receiving deliverance? You will know the different ways the enemy can attack you either through witchcraft, either through curses, either through spirit husband, either through your name, either through against your marriage. This, are, this book was exposed to you. Anybody who wants to know about deliverance and about the ways the demons and the witches operate, how witches can hunt down your star, how witches can um, you turn you into scape, scapegoat in order to destroy you, this book will give you all the vital informations you need for your deliverance and it will help you body afflictions how many people are going through attacks on their body demonic visitation demons in, in, uh, visiting you which cascade get good evil soul ties i explained to you how all these things oppress asmodeus and osmodeus these are demons that breaks marriages and keep people single satanic spiders and spider web every time you experience a spider web in your life satanic monitors demons and witches monitoring you evil authors and covenant that are affecting your body, are affecting your life. You learn all star hunters, demons and witches that are after your star and your glory and how they can pursue after your star to destroy you, how to use the anointing oil, how to anoint your house. These are all uh, and how to do self-deliverance. This book, Spiritual Diagnosis, Spiritual Diagnosis. The other one is called Deliverance from Blessing Destroyers. This book gives you 30 dreams that shows you that your blessings and your prosperity is under demonic and witchcraft attacks. 35 prayer to cancel demonic dreams and, uh, and against your life. Are you, have you been having evil dreams? Have you been having bad dreams? Do you understand the dreams? Do you know how to pray to reverse it, to destroy it? How to overcome the four major causes of poverty? 
you will discover what causes poverty and the 11 witchcraft activities, 11 witchcraft activities to destroy your blessings and your destiny. You also learn about the 16 demons that attack our finances, prayers to overcome demonic operation against your blessings, uh, prayers to uh, against witchcraft activities, and nice spiritual element for your, your blessings, deliverance from blessing destroyers, emergency prayers, for marriage restoration, anybody going through marital problem, anybody wanting to get married, anybody wanting to know how to pray against witchcraft, against marine demons, against strange women, against household wickedness, against spouse, uh, spouse charms, against your marriage, and how to pray to preserve your marriage, get this book, Deliverance from Blessing Destroy, uh, Emergency Prayers for uh, Marriage Restoration, any marriage under attack, this is your book. Consuming Fire for Fire, this is the book that you need in order to teach you how to pray against the spirit husband, spirit wife, python spirit, leviathan spirit, witchcraft spirit, demonic spirit, strange woman, come against singleness, spirit of delay, spirit of uh, satanic embargoes, anything, anybody who is going through witchcraft, this is the book. And if you want to know how to pray against a witch, get this book and it will teach you how to pray against witchcraft and get your deliverance. Emergency prayers for marriage restoration. Emergency prayers. Urgent prayers. This urgent prayers against the strong man. This book will teach you how to pray against back to sender. Anybody who releases evil arrow against you, how to send it back to the sender. This um, book will also teach you how to pray to open every satanic padlock that has padlocked your destiny and your star. This book will teach you how to pray against the spirit of death, sicknesses, and diseases, especially cancer. And this book will also teach you how to pray for favor in uh, for your life. And if you are dealing with any strong man, the spirit of Pharaoh that is holding you in bondage and captivity, this is the book you need. Emergency prayer for uh, urgent prayer against the strong man. Get this book and it will bless you. Touch not my anointed. If you don't want witches and wizards to mess you up, this is the book to get. And once you, you begin to use it, you will get, begin to get your deliverance from all the powers of darkness. Get, go to our website, www.freshfireprayer.com. www.freshfireprayer.com. Get these materials. Start reading them. Start praying these prayers in the midnight hour or every time you have and start praying them. Use these prayers and pray it and it will change your life and it will help you to fight against the powers of darkness and your life and your destiny will never be the same. Go to our website www.freshfireprayer.com www.freshfireprayer.com If you order the uh, ebook, you will get it within 24 hours uh, and we will email it to you as an attachment. If you order the paperback, you give us a uh, four to five days and it will be emailed to you uh, it will be sent to you and it will help you out to get your deliverance god richly bless you bye